Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, AKA The Rig Doctor. And today I'm gonna be taking you through one of my guitar heroes and guitar icons, the classic session guitarist, Paul Jackson Jr.'s new compact travel rig that's designed for him to take on the road or use in small sessions around town. I'm excited to show you exactly what we did, what he's got going on, and how you might be able to implement some of these exact things that we did on his rig and some of these tricks into your own rig. Let's check it out. So if you don't know who Paul Jackson Jr. is, You've definitely heard him, even if you've never heard his name. From modern stuff like the Daft Punk records to classics like Michael Jackson's Thriller, Paul Jackson's clean guitar riffs have been ubiquitous on many of our beloved records that we've known throughout time. Now, Paul came to us and asked us if we would build him something small and compact that he could take for travel dates and for around town sessions that would have all the things that he likes and that he uses regularly in just a more compact, friendly size. It's easy for him to load in and load out and doesn't need to bring a huge rack in order to get all the effects and sounds that he likes to use. So for this project, we're using one of our Vertex pedal boards, the Travel Plus pedal board. It's a 20 by 11 inch pedal board, nice and compact, and it uses a TP2 riser, which has a cutout for a volume pedal or an expression pedal, and leaves a little room above that to put some sort of interface box, and we'll get into a little bit of that as we get into the details of Paul's exact rig. Now, Paul and I discussed a lot of this stuff already in advance, via Zoom, and we were able to kind of get a rough game plan about what we were gonna be doing for this rig and how to really make it custom to exactly his needs. But the main principles are that it needs to be a stereo rig and that it needs to be wired for stereo for two different effects loop equipped amps. So in other words, stereo effects loop amps or using them in mono. Now, this system is based around using two different primary devices. The Musicom Lab EFX LE, which is one of our favorite switchers that we talked about in one of our recent videos about how to choose the best switcher for you and kind of a buyer's guide for switchers. And it's also based around the Boss GT1000, which is kind of the brain of what's going into the effects loops in stereo. And it's also splitting to having part of it in front of the amplifier. These are two really core things that are a part of this entire rig. Equally on the interface side, we built in a wireless defeat because Paul, when he's playing this live, will be using a wireless unit, but when he's using it for sessions around town, he's gonna to go corded into the input, and in this case, it will bypass the wireless. Now getting into the nuts and bolts of the build, I'm gonna be showing my process as I'm actually building this thing in real time and speed that up for you so you can get a glimpse of how I'm executing some of these things that we're talking about. But the first things first as we're starting this rig, I gotta put everything down and lock it in place. Now in the old days, I would always use 3M Dual Lock, but since then, we've come up with a better system that's customized to our rig, which is our power grip. And this is something that's available on the rigdr.com if you're interested in using the exact same fasteners we used to get everything put down and locked in place in terms of the pedals on this pedal board. Now I really love the power grip because of two reasons. One, it sticks better to almost any surface and is almost completely impervious to heat or temperature changes and is not going to lift up over time. The second thing is, is that I don't need to use two different densities in order to get a good quality lock of the pedals to the pedal board surface. Ordinarily, when I was using the 3M products, I'd have to offset two different densities, an SJ3550 along with an SJ3551. I don't wanna do that. I don't like having to stock two different parts in order to get the best fit on the pedal board. When I'm using the power grip, I just have one type, I apply a minimal amount, and I get the same amount of locking ability on the pedals to the pedal board. It's an absolute godsend, so do check that out over on the rigdr.com if you're interested in using exactly what we used on Paul's rig. So for the next part of the build, we're gonna be doing power. Now when we talk about power, it's always part of what we call the holy trinity of tone. The holy trinity of tone are sort of the three pillars, or the three things that need to be in existence on a rig in order to make sure that it's the quietest rig possible and sounds as good as it possibly can. And if you're maintaining these three things, it's gonna ensure that you have that great end result that's quiet and sounds great at the end of the day. 
And the first of those things is the power supply. Now I've talked about in our video buyer's guide about how to choose the best power supply. It's always best to choose an isolated power supply and preferably a switch mode power supply because they're the quietest and they're gonna be impervious to where you put them on the pedal board and you can use them anywhere in the world. And if you're familiar with Paul and the amount of touring that he does and the amount of sessions that he plays, you know that he's gonna need a power supply that can work anywhere and is not going to require a step up or step down transformer to work. So this is great for that purpose. We've chosen the Strymon Zuma with its auxiliary supply, the Ohi. This ensures that everything gets the voltage and current that it needs as well as being able to provide a current doubler to the GT1000, which requires a thousand milliamps in order to function properly. So we've actually combined two outputs in parallel to get that, that 1000 milliamps. And if you're curious about how to make that type of cable yourself, we have a diagram on exactly how to do that in a video tutorial in our video catalog. Now for all the power, I'm wiring all these cables custom to length based on the provided power cables that come with the Strymon supplies. I'm connecting one side to the pedal, I'm routing it into my source, which is the power supply, and then I'm cutting it to length and re-terminating with a Kobecon 2.1 millimeter barrel end. And you can see exactly how to do this again in our DIY power cable tutorial. There's no benefit to using a super high quality cable in this particular context. For power, it's not the same as a guitar cable. As long as it meets the minimum size requirements in order to deliver the voltage and current, it is pretty irrelevant what the brand name is. And so I usually just use the provided power cables that come with the supplies. They're designed for the supplies and we shorten them to length so everything fits perfectly. Now the next part of the holy trinity of tone is using high quality soldered low capacitance cables. And in this case, we're gonna be using Mogami 2314 throughout the entire rig. It's a great cable, easy to use and if you watch, our cable shootout, you'll see that this was among the top two most favorable cables of all the major brand patch cable manufacturers out there. And we enrolled a bunch of people from the industry, Dan from that pedal show, Corey Wong, Kerry Too Smooth, Ariel Posen, all sorts of great players to weigh in on a blind test to see which patch cables were out there. And this is why I continue to use the Mogami 2314 and we even offer it on the rig dr.com if you're interested in getting some of these exact same patch cables with the exact same square plug ends that we're using here on Paul's rig. The way I like to do this for a switcher is a little bit different. I like making the cables half cables at a time where I'll solder one end at the switcher and then I'll route that into the pedal. I also will label all of the plugs so that I know which ones are sends and returns in which loop they're corresponding to. This is a really helpful thing if you're doing a switcher like I have here for Paul, if you're doing one yourself so you always know where things are going and if you ever change devices, you know which cables are going to and from what parts of the switcher and then I'm just gonna hand solder all these to the length that they need to be, maybe giving him a little extra room so that if he wants to switch out some of these pedals, he can. But this thing is pretty dang compact, so I don't know how much more room he's gonna be able to do to expand, but given the circumstances, if it's a one-to-one -one sort of swap out, he should be able to do pretty much anything within those size frames of the pedals that are already in existence. The final piece to the holy trinity of tone is all about buffering. And if you've watched any of our videos, you know what a proponent we are of high quality buffers. And in this case, I'm doing exactly what we did in our DIY buffer tutorial using the Creation Audio Lab buffer kits to install in this. And because this is going stereo effects loops, I have an input buffer and two stereo output buffers that are gonna be going to the returns of both of the effects loops. This is ensuring that we're gonna get the highest quality and fidelity signal to and from the amplifiers and controlling the pickup loading of the guitar so that everything is seeing a consistent loading all the time and we have low impedance line driving outputs that are gonna be impervious to long lengths of cable going back and forth from the amp and the effects loop. Now, if you wanna know how to build this exact same DIY buffer, you can check out our DIY buffer tutorial, and I'll even include links here in the description that show exactly how to make this one, exactly how Paul's is, which also has that wireless defeat. If you wanna go cabled and defeat your wireless and bypass this, this will allow you to do it. And so you can have exactly how Paul does it, exactly what's on that rig. I'll provide all that, the materials and all that stuff for you so that you can literally duplicate this exactly as you see it here. 
So now that we're done with the board, we need to meet back up with Paul, get his impressions. I've sent him some pictures as I've been going along, but this is the first time that he's gonna see it in all of its glory. It's absolutely sounding great. It's clean, it's quiet, designed to be used into an effects loop, either stereo or mono. I think he's gonna be really thrilled about this and the weight and the form factor is just so small for what it does and the firepower that it has. This is gonna be something that he can take around town, that he can travel across the world with and really be able to have everything that he's used to having in his larger pedal boards and racks in a smaller, compact, and easy to maneuver form factor. So let's meet up with Paul. Let's see what he thinks. All right, so straight back to here. Yay. See it on the floor. I'm at the famous Vertex Lab. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Man, 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 man. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, this is killing. Yeah. Hey folks, just here noodling. In the studio with none other than the rig doctor himself, Mason Marangella. Now, we did the intro where, you know, you saw me and he surprised me with this amazing rig. And I've gotten a chance to live with it for um, oh, about three weeks or so. And I gotta tell you, it's just gotten for me better and better and better. When you have a chance to think and work with things, it stimulates ideas. Uh, one of the things I realized is, for instance, okay, for a fly rig, you think in terms of something that you don't have to check into your luggage. This is that. Dissimilar, if you will, to other fly rigs. This has five pedals, not including the volume pedal and the Wawa, a wireless, an H9, and a GT1000 core. So a lot of versatility there. So the cool thing is, let's say you're using an overdrive that you really, really dig, and uh, you say, man, I, I like this overdrive, but I really want to try this one. The top flips up and reveals a lot of the guts in there where you can you know, adjust pedals and change things and very, very simply. Also, the wiring in this thing is first rate. I mean, it's like you know, all the connectors are soldered. You don't want to use... Um, non-soldered cables, as Mason talks about a lot. It's dead quiet, very, very simple, very intuitive. Hey, let's talk a little bit about buffers. Okay, so what does a buffer do? What a buffer does is it changes a high impedance signal to low impedance so the tone of your guitar does not get lost with long cable runs or going through multiple pedals. So the cool thing about this setup is the interface box that Mason used has a buffer built in. So as soon as you go in, you're in a buffer. Another cool thing that Mason does is on this video, he is giving you the schematics, the wiring diagram, the templates, everything you need to build a board exactly like this or as similar as you want. And if you can read a newspaper, if you can follow a PDF, then you'll be able to uh, follow the given information and build yourself a great system like this or even better. So I think that's really, really cool. And like I said, presets. Now, this is a little exaggerated. Like I said, you got a clean sound here. Uh, let's see. Now let's say I like that preset, but I want it louder with delay. I hit one button. One button. Okay, let's say uh, I want a drive sound. Well, instead of turning off that, changing something on the GT1000, adding a drive pedal, and, you know, whatever else I would have to do, I hit one button because of the switcher and the presets.
one button. Now, just to have a sound that has makes no sense at all. I don't know. I shouldn't say no sense. Maybe it does. Okay, now that sound is two compressors. Uh, why do I have two compressors on the board? Why do I have the SP compressor and a mini Dynacomp? Well, actually, because I can. Uh, and I'm a compression, compression fiend. So being a compression fiend, I, I had to have two compressors. So this sound is two compressors, no drive, and some kind of weird sound I got in the H9 that's, you know, kind of like a big cloudy reverb with a lot of delay on it. which might be useful for something. But the idea is you can go from that straight into this. one button so for concerts if you're you know you're working with you know any artist you could program the whole show you know this particular board uses an EFX a Musicom EFX LE so I have five presets per uh, per bank and I don't know how many banks I've never used more than two banks in a show which is 10 songs but you figure the good thing is it shoots out MIDI so it changes programs on the G on the GT 1000 and on the H9 so there's a lot of flexibility there. Uh, very easy on this rig, the way uh, Mason wired it to run the four cable method. Uh, the other cool thing that he did is, just, like I said, I mentioned there's a wireless on here. When I'm using the packs, works fine. If I'm in the studio, I plug in a cable, it bypasses the wireless. So a lot of flexibility here. So for people, and, and this is most people, you're not at the point where it's like, okay, I can have five rigs. I've got one for the studio and one for the house and one for the road and one for this. Okay, with something like this, you don't need five rigs. You can have one rig that's very, very versatile. You got five places for pedals, so you can switch overdrives, you can switch fuzz tones, you can switch compressors, you can switch whatever you, know, whatever you like and, uh, and have a place for them. So I am very, very happy. Uh, rig Doctor, Mason Marangella, uh, vertex pedals, what can I tell you? So that was our rig build for the iconic session musician, one of my guitar heroes, Paul Jackson Jr. Such an honor to work with Paul on this project, to get to see his tastes, his preferences, and get to communicate with him about how he sees things and how he really implements the tones that you've heard on all of those classic recordings. What a cool opportunity for us. We're grateful to Paul for thinking of us and for participating in this video and letting us document and really show you all the nuts and bolts of how this thing came together. If you like what you saw today, I highly recommend that you like, you subscribe, you leave us a comment, tell us about some of the favorite pedals that you saw, maybe a favorite Paul Jackson Jr. tune that he might have played on. We'd love to hear from you about your thoughts about Paul and this rig in the comments below. And if you want to support us, as I said before, all the materials that we used in the actual rig build, from the audio cables to the Velcro to all the tie down mounts and zip ties that we're using to secure all of the things on the pedal board. Those are all available on the rigdr.com. You can check that out and we have everything you're gonna to need to build a custom pedal board, including the pedal board platform and all that good stuff. And if you wanna support us further, you can always check out our podcast or head over to vertexeffects.com and buy one of our pedals that we have at our store or again, one of the pedal boards, just like this one that we have here for Paul that we used to build his rig on. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, AKA The Rig Doctor. See you later.